machine learning assumes every point is independent of every other point, which is your classic statistics. Geostatistics says samples are related to each other by distance. That hasn't been translated into machine learning yet. So don't be fooled by, you know, machine learning is going to tell us where the ore body is. And even if you can, we know that the sample separation is such that the volume variance effect changes the model depending on the scale, small blocks, big blocks. So I think there's a lot of learning the industry still got to do that innovation space is not taking account of. Today I'm catching up with Jackie Coombs. Jackie is the MD for Amira and she's been globetrotting around the world talking to people about research and development and innovation in the mining industry. This is what we need to find solutions to the problems we're all trying to solve, whether it's education or technology or finding ore bodies. So really interesting discussion. Um, we fear left and right a little bit in some of her past because Jackie's done so many different and wonderful things. It's hard to list them all here. Uh, but a bit about resource geology, she's written a couple of books, and obviously I share her passion of education. So without further ado, let's get into it. Hey Jackie, good to see you. Lovely to see you too, Renee. Are you well? You've been traveling a lot, I, uh, I've been seeing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The gates opened and uh, bolted. You didn't hold back. I think you went straight for the, uh, the 19 city globetrotting trip. I don't know where you were, but it looked like everywhere. Yeah, no, it's, it was just wonderful to, to, to get out there again as an extrovert being tied down and locked out. Um, it was a little bit intense. Yeah, well, Everyone look, it, was, it was fun to watch that on LinkedIn. And, uh, you know, I got some questions on, you know, some of the visits you had, but uh, maybe before we start, um, obviously, yeah, I don't know. I can't, I look back into emails trying to figure out where we first met and it was about I'd say 10, 11 years ago. Um, but we obviously had an overlap in interest, right? I mean, education space, resource space, and, and we got talking about things, Jork and uh, all, all sorts of other things. Uh, but I couldn't actually quite remember, so maybe you do recall, but for the people who don't know who you are, and I'm sure most do, I've, I've written down a little, uh, little history of, of things that you have done and that I know of. And it's quite the versatile background and you don't get to talk to people who've got such a crazy background of, of skills. And I usually ask people to give themselves a bit of an introduction. Um, but uh, I thought this time I'll, I'll just put some points in. You're a trained geostatistician, right? Uh, then you worked as a consultant with Snowden. Uh, so that's obviously been, you know, during a very important time of, of Snowden consultants that I'm sure everybody's familiar with. Then you started, um, you know, with your own company, Coombs Capability, wrote a couple of books in between. Um, then on the whim decided to do a PhD, and I had to write it down because I always get this wrong, but a PhD in competency development for JORC code reporting and role on JORC. And then you just snuck in a master's in resources and commercial law as, as one does, because why not? Um, you did the company's director's course, and then suddenly innovation. Um, so a lot of innovation thing, Met, Met's ignited. Uh, innovation role back with Snowden. Um, so that was full circle, which I'd love to hear your thoughts on. Um, acting chair and independent director of the International Center for Radio Astronomy Research. Where does that come from? And now obviously managing director with Amira. Uh, and I'd love to know about what you're up to uh, there, but for what is worth welcome. And if I've missed anything, please fill some gaps because really exciting. Obviously we talk so many times, but with big gaps in between, Great to see you and I'd love to, love to hear what you're up to. Thank you, Renee. Thank you. Um, I actually do remember first meeting you. Um, I remember at the conference, OzMM conference, the Mind Geology Conference in Queenstown. That's right, Queenstown. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it was a wonderful conference. It was a, and it's one of my favorite conferences because it's an opportunity to see what young people are doing, it's an opportunity for young, yeah, just to watch them shine, sure. um, which always is a thrill for me. And and I remember watching you shine through that. Um, it was, I think, you hosted the the dinner as a yeah. as a young geologist. Yeah. You put yourself out there, and you have always put yourself out as a learner, as a curious participant in the ecosystem. And I think that's why we've always kept in touch 
Yeah. Because I've I've been impressed. I, I I really enjoy that sense of curiosity, that learning, continuous learning, and and I follow a lot of people who who have done that in their careers. And the the Mind Geology Conference is one of those spaces that really allows people to shine. And it's it's one of my favorite conferences. And I'll tell anybody who will listen yet. I always try to go there. And uh, last year. Um, or this year, actually in March, obviously it was uh, there was another one, and yeah, it's really one of my favorite ones. And I do remember the Queenstown one because it's the first time as a company we sponsored a conference, and that was all very nerve wracking, and uh, you know, just got into public space. So that's that's twelve years ago, I think, because that's Queenstown. Yeah. I'm sure it's yeah. 2010 or something like that. And uh, yeah, but I, two kind of words, but you know, I think where we overlap is indeed that curiosity and and that industry, right? Because. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I sometimes try to explain this for uh, to to friends who are not in the industry or or family, and you know, and it's it's such a it's such a weird chaos, but it, at the same time, it's a tight family as well. Whether it's an Aussie mem conference or where they, wherever you go um, across the world, and again, coming back to some of your recent posts, you know, I'm sure you connect with a whole bunch of people that you've been staring at through a, a video screen for the last couple of years, and. It's so nice, and I really um, I love that. And yeah, meeting you um, at that around that time, um, because for me, it's always been that hunger of connecting people. Like, who who knows about this stuff, and who knows about that stuff, and how can I connect dots between here and here, and how can we all learn from this? And then, oh, you wrote a book. Jeez, you know, I didn't know that. Well, and and what do you think about that? Let's do a paper because we banged out a paper at some point halfway through as well. Um, and uh, yeah, so I love that. And I think, yeah, I appreciate your energy levels in this as well. And, and what I wrote down is, where do you find the time? You know, it's it's between that <laughs> and family. Knit. I, I don't knit. <laughs> yeah. I always yeah. say I don't knit. I think because for me, what I do and my, my career and the work I do, it invigorates me. It invigorates me so much that this is my hobby. Yeah. Yeah, I cannot. Yeah. I can't put it down. I don't know how to go off because this is. It, it is a family. It is a yeah. family. It's a community, and it doesn't matter where you go in the world in the mining industry. And we get to go to some awesome places. Yeah. But you meet people. You you interact with cultures, and you realize that no matter where you are in the world, or who you are working with in the mining industry, there's a thirst and a hunger to know more. Yeah. And I, I love being able to play my part in, yeah. in helping others learn. And, you know, I'm thinking, you know, the Ozim, coming back to the OZIMM conference, there was, a, there was a young geologist from Egypt who approached me to, to guide them through their, their masters, um, Mohammed Bader. And one of the things I encouraged him to do and his company was to get him to present at the OZIMM conference. Yeah. It was wonderful to watch him grow through that experience. And there, there's somebody from Egypt who's reached out for help and assistance. And what a privilege to be able to do that and yeah. to connect, as you say, those yeah. people to the community. Yeah. And it doesn't matter where you are. It's the questions. It's the questions that invigorate me. I don't have the answers. I really don't. No, but I'm inspired by the questions and helping yeah. and him through that. Yeah, look, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the same. I mean, and it, yeah, we're, we're kids in the candy store, right? Because it's a, it's a hobby, and we get paid to, you know, solve puzzles. I mean, um, how, how, how good can you get it there? And, and this just prompted a thought, and I wanted to come back to this later. But you and I have both been speaking with Hayden Mort, and I know you've got geologized on the Amira website as well in that education space, right? And I, um, the, the, the podcast is still to come out, and I'm not sure where it comes out before or after this talk, but uh, for the listeners who are interested in that, that whole education space, um, it is so interesting to, um, you know, to see the passion at which we connect with the industry and to share that knowledge, you know, and this is essentially what this channel is about as well, right? I mean, it's it's people listening in and they, they, they dial in from all sorts of places and um, listen to what it's like to be a resource geologist or to work in innovation, to what you do and, and sharing that knowledge. I mean, that's... Uh, that's exciting, and yeah, like you say, young people speaking at conferences. That's that's such a good experience um, because you know you're not going to stand there and talk about a subject and not understand it, right? That's just not going to happen. So you you you're forcing yourself out of your comfort zone, which is great character building, and um, and you see uh, with young people um, and maybe 
sort of stringing another concept, the whole LinkedIn thing, right? Because I'm quite active there and have been for years and you're obviously quite active as well. And people just connect with you out of the blue from whatever background, education background, country, jurisdiction, um, education level or um, and, and with questions. And um, why not? Let's connect. I got an email the other day from a TV company that is setting up a, a reality show about mining and they wanted to know some things. <laughs> Why not? Let's have a conversation. I'm sure it'd be heaps of yeah. fun. So, yeah, no, I, I think I really shared it uh, with you. So that's, uh, uh, but yeah, since then, 12 years, I mean, you've done so many things, but uh, uh, what, what, I mean, I've got a whole bunch of questions there, but, but maybe just go straight to your recent uh, experience. I mean, why did you end up after all this? Because you, you have know, so many choices of things you want to do and can do. Uh, you've worked for yourself, worked for consultants, worked in the industry. Why, why Amir, after, after those years and what, what really drew you into that? Is that the problem solving at the top end of the game? Is that sort of how I see that or like bringing everybody together? Or? Um, I think for me, what, what inspires me is often the, the challenge of... of um, <laughs> So the, let me just backtrack a little bit. Hmm. Getting into doing a, a master's in, in um, commercial and resources law, it looks odd, but it really came back from a, a question that a lawyer <laughs> a lawyer approached me and went, oh, it's, it's corporations law, you won't understand it. And I thought, how dare you? How dare hmm. you say I can't understand it? If I've got to live by the law and it pertains to JORC and the work we do, I better understand it. Yeah. So I searched out a course on, on corporations law. There was the AICD as one option, but more interesting for me was the UWA course that offered um, corporation governance, corporate governance for, for mining, for the resources companies, mm -hmm. mining law, environmental law, socioeconomic law dealing with China, um, regulatory theory and ethics, and you suddenly went, wow, you know, this is just a whole new world. I'd love to understand more about it. So so that's, that's it's always operating at that edge of mm -hmm. what I know. Um, coming to, to Amira, and Amira has been around for 60 years. It is a, a member-based organization. It builds collaboration. At its heart, it, it's about advancing technology, knowledge, capability in the industry for the industry and by the industry and supporting the research landscape to do that across the globe. And you go, wow, what a what an incredible organization. And I think back to 1959 to, to the five or six founding fathers in Melbourne and I picture them in these, you know, Chesterfields probably swirling whiskey and cut glass and holding yeah, cigars. cigars. That's how I yeah. imagine it, 1959. Yeah and saying we need to aggregate our resources and actually drive change for the industry. So what Amira stands for is very much what I've been standing for my whole career um, and the privilege to actually help the organization or be part of an organization that builds that change across the industry. It wasn't, I mean, it's just, just a, it's an enormous privilege. Yeah, it's yeah. it's you know, how can I say no? Yeah. Um, I did have many many of my mentors said, "Don't touch it." That's you know, there's so much to do, and there has been a lot to do. There's been a lot to bring the organisation from a um, being a not for profit. There's often not a lot invested in systems and processes, and over time that builds up. So the last two years during you know the lockdown. We've we've cleaned house. We've cleaned house and got a lot of those yeah. systems and processes ready. Yeah. So when the gates opened, you know, we're, we're ready to to run and and, and um, continue the good work. But, but that's but to that's make sure that I mean, we bring everyone along. Yeah, well, that's I mean that's really impressive because as a not for profit, um, it's it's been involved with a few. <laughs> it's very hard financially. To balance that all out because like you said you need systems and processes if you want some growth and that that means quite a deep investment you know and, and systems um you know whether it's support it systems or the right people in the right place i saw you had new board members as well so governance is, is obviously quite something that you're working on i can i can see that but it must be hard because we still uh, you know i don't know if, if that's 
even a good data point to go by, but we, we often get um, a bad rep for not doing enough R&D in the industry, right? We're not really discovering new things and I can come up with some examples, although I can also come up with some good examples of new discoveries, but is, is that fair? Are we, or is that, yeah. um, you know, should we do more? And how do you, and this may be two questions wrapped up in one, but the other thing to that to that question is it's really hard to have that happening at a global scale because it's it's a lot of chess pieces on the chessboard and a lot of getting people around a big round table this time minus the guys in the whiskey but still getting them around a table right i mean that must be pretty challenging as a not for profit then so there are probably two questions there one one is mm. around you know the global element um, and the other is, I think you were saying, navigating as a not-for-profit yeah, system yeah. and processes. Um, we've, we've got, you know, it's, the beauty is we've got 60 years, more than 60 years of systems, and not necessarily technology systems, but thought processes and governance to build collaboration and to deal with the challenges of collaboration because collaboration is hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard when you're in the same culture to have those collaborations. So how do you, what are some of the things that you need to prepare for? What are some of the things you need to be cognizant of? And that's what Amaya has got a, you know, a long history of, of dealing with and the strength that we bring to the community. Yeah. In terms of the global element, that's actually the wonderful strength because all of Amaya's members come from around the globe. They're we, we represent about, I think it's half of the, of the market capitalization around the world. And we've got some fantastic support from, you know, players in, in Brazil, in Chile, in North America, yeah. in Africa, in Australia. Groups that have, um, that have been participating in Myra projects for a long time. And what you see is these, these Myra projects um, – build capability. So you have PhDs coming through, for example, codes in in, um, in in University of Tasmania. And they go on, those 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 um, graduates go on to be leaders in the industry. Mm -hmm. So they understand where the roots are from and where their support has come from. So the opportunity there to build leaders and mm -hmm. to build that long-term leadership is, is, is an important element. And, and as you, you know, you obviously are funded through the members and I can uh, see, you know, again, having some experience on other groups that, you know, um, member supported, not for profits, there must be different interests, you know, different members want to achieve different things. It must be a constant juggling act to make sure that everybody gets out of their membership what they, what they need to get out of it. I'm not quite sure how the membership is tiered or what input there are and there might, might be too much detail, but wonder how you balance all those balls in the air across, you know, 12 time yeah. zones as well. That's the secret source of collaboration. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's, there's a big difference between cooperation and collaboration. Yeah. So cooperation is when you go into um, a, a, a group wanting to get something out for yourself. Collaboration is where you want to go into the group, get something for yourself, but also create benefit for the sure. others. Yeah. And that's the secret sauce, is yeah. when you're creating opportunities for industry, you're also creating opportunities for the individuals involved, for the companies involved, and for the researchers involved. And the supplier companies who get involved. Um, so, so that's that's the that's the big challenge in collaboration: is yeah. how do you make sure that you're bringing benefit to everyone who's sitting around the table? That's the big yeah. challenge. Yeah, and I guess there's another. Uh, I mean, everybody's staring at the abyss of the recession at the moment, uh, making plans for the next five years. Um, you know, is that adding another layer of complexity to it? Our members, I mean, Excellent. already, yeah. I think just uh, you mentioned it earlier about the, the spend in research and development. Mm. I've looked at some data from the OECD. So that's, you know, data that's been cleaned. It's been validated. CPI mm -hmm. index for 2015 and adjusted for purchasing power parity so that you can compare country to country. Now, when you look at that data, Australia's investment in research and development is currently around 20% of what it was 10 years ago. Wow. And it's 9% of what it was 20 years ago. So you see this consistent decline in yeah. the investment. And this is the BERD, which is the Business Expenditure and R&D, 
not government expenditure, yeah. company expenditure. So it's declining year and year on. And you're seeing the same patterns happen in, in Canada and in the USA. Um, in contrast, what we're seeing in China is after the GFC, China doubled its efforts and not government spending, mm -hmm. business spending, doubled its efforts in, in 2010 and have sustained those levels. And you're starting to see now the, the increased, dramatic increase in patent ownership and patent applications coming out of China wow. in terms of the mining technology and mining knowledge. Um, and that's an interesting trend. So on the one hand, with that recession facing us, that yeah. potential for even less funding going into research and development, which is a reason to aggregate it, yeah. um, but also where do nations see or where do companies see the future in terms of, of who's going to own the knowledge, who's going to own the technology, and what are the implications for CapEx and OpEx? So is there a difference then between, because you mentioned, you know, companies and countries, should, how, how does that balance lie? And should the BHPs um, be, be contributing more to this? Or should Australia as a country say, look, if we want to, you know, we look at the, 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 the whole, you know, China dynamics, I guess, if you want to call it that with one, one name, um, the, the mining is a big part of Australia. And if you want to quote unquote, protect your turf, um, you know, and, and stuff needs to come out of the ground to fuel the economy, we need to do something here. Is that a message that you're then trying to, to, to broadcast at the highest levels or? Yes, so, so for Amira, we politically agnostic. We're a global yeah. organization. We actually represent the industry. Um, the data itself is divided into countries, and I suppose the challenge then is for governments, if they are wanting to to have um, that jurisdiction and understand the, the appeal of their, their particular jurisdiction, these patterns need to be um, addressed. addressed. Yeah, addressed. Yeah, and, and but, but the the I mean the obvious follow up from that is uh, I mean I was talking to Bruce Harvey about ESG the other day, and that will be another uh, talk that will come out soon, uh, or before this we'll see. Um, the there's there's a few things happening there. We're finding fewer deposits, right? That that's the message that we hear over okay. and over, I and mean, everything has been found. It's harder. We now need to go undercover. That means research and development into tools to help us explore undercover and all the rest of it. Uh, at the same time, you know, the the demand is we're now not in a recession that is fueled by demand issues, which is ridiculous, right? It's fueled by supply issues. Who who, who I can't I can't connect it in my head, right? It doesn't. It just it makes no sense. Um, so we sit with that, and then here we hear that you know research R and D budgets have been going from you know twenty percent or nine percent, depending on how far back you go, of what it used to be. Um, something's got to break, right? I mean, this, this is not looking very good. Um, well, does it break or does it move? And that's, well, move, that's, yeah, sure. But where does the it move then? So, so the challenge I put to industry is do you want to have leadership of the future? Do you mm. want to be in the driver's seat or do you want to be in the receiving seat? Mm. Because somebody is investing in research and development mm -hmm. and it looks like it's coming out of China. Mm -hmm. So... Yes, they will be. We will Somebody find will. the resources. Yeah. But who will have? Who will be in the driving seat? Yeah. Is the question. And when you look at the technology that's coming out and the innovation, it's across the spectrum. It's not like mm. they're concentrating in one area or the other. It's mm. from the geosciences all the way. And you hit on a really, really important thing. You know, is the, the drive and the demand for resources going up, the ore body grades going lower. The, the deeper, more complex. And what we're ending up with there is a complex combination of increased waste, which infers increased energy required to actually extract the resources, yep. and of course, increased tailings. Coupled with that is a challenge around water. Yep. So these, these challenges that our industry face are not isolated challenges. Yeah. Which means we actually need to coordinate an effort on how well, we how we get there. Yeah, and it's multifaceted because what I was uh, pointing out, but I actually forgot to mention as I came into it, Bruce actually made the point that of these forty huge copper projects that are sitting there right now, twenty mm -hmm. of them will never come out of the ground for social reasons. I mean, that's yet another. Yeah. 
um, another issue, right? That we're not, and I'm, and and without going too deep into it, uh, you know, we, I think as an industry, we're not really recognizing how fast this is being thrown at us, this ESG change, and we're not reacting to it fast enough. And if we do, we're probably overcorrect. Add to that this, this, um, uh, this lack of investment in R&D, and perhaps on top of that, um, weave into this, this whole education um, gap in terms of people wanting to get into the industry, if we call it the industry at large, you know, there's a whole bunch of variables and they're all pointing one way. This is become this is going to get difficult. And and I find that there's so many facets really interesting. I don't have the solution, but you know, this the 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 work that you do is obviously part of that. And the work that people like Bruce are doing is part of that. And what Hayden is doing with education is part of that. Somebody will fill the something will fill the gap. The pendulum will Absolutely. swing, right? I mean, it's it's the world and supply and demand will. Yeah, I'm not an economist, but surely, surely we'll all be fine, Jackie. Right? Tell us we're going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I see, you know, and perhaps that's you know, the eternal optimist in me. Yeah, I see this as a huge opportunity. It depends on where you where you sit. Yeah. So if you sit within a country boundary, then you're going to then you're going to perceive the problem within that that um, country boundary. Whereas at Amira, we're actually global. So when I see the whole, um, you know, the, the green technology revolution, mm -hmm. this is a great opportunity for Africa, a yeah. huge opportunity. Yeah. And what you're seeing in Africa is a generation of young leaders standing up, speaking about the pan-African opportunity. Yeah. For me, coming out of Africa, um, I'm mining has given me an opportunity I would never have had if I'd not been in mining. It, mm -hmm. it has opened up doors. It has allowed me to travel. It has given me my career yeah. and the opportunities that go with that. Now, there may not be people who want to um, engage in industry, young people in, in Australia, but there are a lot of people around the world who are seeking opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. And we need to broaden our perspective and be more international, global in our perspective. Yeah. There are people who will fill that gap. They just won't look like Australians or, or such like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, no, look, that's a fair point. And I think in that solution mix, it's then immigration policies as well, right? Because if it's a country like Australia and if, hey, we don't want to do it because it's not green enough, then we at least need to allow the skills to come from somewhere else to, to help and, yeah, and, and build yeah. it. So, and and yeah. look how many, <laughs> you know, the old adage about the taxi drivers who are engineers, mm. their names mm. are just hard to pronounce. Therefore, they don't get jobs. I mean, the, the amount of talent that's wasted, mm -hmm. it, it breaks my heart. It breaks yeah. my heart. Yeah. Well, and we have, you know, I've come across um, a young man from Africa, sat, sat next to him on a plane from Brisbane several years ago. Um, he had just completed his PhD in geophysics mm. and was struggling to find a job. PhD completed it at Curtin. Right. And you go, well, this, you know, we have to get over ourselves. There's some talent here. It's a, yeah, it's yeah. waiting. There's, there's, there are people waiting for the opportunities. Yeah, there's a call for action. That's, uh, yeah, <laughs> no, I'm yeah. sure what. Let's hey, involve I'm, everyone. Yeah, look, absolutely. And, and that's, I mean, I completely agree. And that's what, um, you know, I think we're trying to do this as well with the part that we play as a company. Um, you know, as a service company, you can only really fulfill a need, I guess. Um, but we try to, bring that at a, at a global level, right? Because, and then it's far easier to tap into global networks and, and uh, understand where uh, where the demand is coming from and tap into that rather than to only look in your backyard. So that's, uh, yeah. um, no, look, yeah. it's, that's a good point. And and so with with Amira, and sorry for mispronouncing it, maybe that's a Dutch person into me. I want to say Amira, but um, uh, Amira, uh, with, with Amira, what, what are you working on at the moment? What should people be watching uh, what 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 what's hot on the on the calendar at the moment? I looked at the news page to see what's coming out to see if if if, if something oh, is. We've got a great team, Renee. Really, and 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 in terms of diversity, I think it's been absolutely wonderful to see how tapping into talent has been really beneficial to to Amira. So we've got, you know, staff from all over the globe, and to bring their ideas together and to to allow them the space to actually those ideas to fruition has been quite exciting. So we've got um, 
a couple of things on the go. We've got many, many projects. Um, and those projects, we, we talk about R&D plus I squared. So research, development, innovation, and implementation. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of technology that hasn't had the uptake but could transform the industry, particularly in the tailing space, um, decarbonization space, water space. So we're looking for ways to to help the industry de-risk that technology um, by testing, by sharing that on site and so forth. So we've got a, a look at um, the tailings. We're looking at decarbonization. We're looking at water. And mm -hmm. in many streams, there are many, many threads that are happening. So are you? So the team is obviously growing, but if you want to solve all these problems and you want to do it internally, you need to hire a lot of people. And again, being a not-for-profit, um, books need to be balanced. And there's a huge war for talent going on. I mean, you're obviously tapping into that global network, yes. which, which gives you the opportunities. But um, people listening uh, with an interest, should they f find the careers page on the Myra's website? Or, or is the team, <laughs> team still growing? Or? Well, perhaps I should have clarified, our role is actually to connect the industry to the researchers. Sure. And, and suppliers. So we're, we're facilitators. So it's not a Myra that comes up with the ideas. It's no, actually no. researchers. And we tap into them yeah. um, and their generosity and their collaboration. Um, so there are lots of ways to get involved with the Myra. Um, but somebody needs to speak that language, right? Because if, if I would be trying to connect two dots and you don't have the technical knowledge of you know, what problem you're trying to solve or who is a good researcher to talk to, you know, that, I'm sure you've got a lot of people in a team there that you know, have a technical background, but at the same time need to be fantastic communicators, right? So that's, uh, they're, they're, those are a rare, rare beasts. Facilitators. But, yeah, and facilitators and organizers. And uh, yeah, so you're, you're really... Uh, our, team, our team are never the experts in the room. Sure, sure. And, yeah. and we, we are the facilitators. We're about building the collaboration and then maintaining that collaboration to delivery. Yeah. So that's, that's another piece there. Yeah, so sure. lo lots going on, lots yeah. of projects. We've got... Um, very, very fortunate to have an excellent board, volunteers. Nice. Um, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's so just a great community. Things are moving in the right direction. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you, you're shining. So, obviously, having a lot of fun. So, that's, you know, that's what, what more do you wish? Yeah. Uh, as, uh, and look, I, I did want to briefly, because I got them on, the, I don't know if you can see them, but I've got your books on the table because I spoke. <laughs> I, I briefly want to go back to you to, uh, to a dark past of working in, uh, uh, you know, as a geostatistician because we, uh, we had a couple of resource geologists on the podcast, uh, Mike Stewart. Uh, Eric Ronald, I don't know if you if those names, I'm sure those names you're familiar with, but uh, we talked about their favorite books and so on. And uh, um, uh, more people have these books on their shelf than you think, I think. Have you, uh, what, what's been the feedback? I'll hold one up here in any case for people, and we'll put a link in the description, but I can't get enough of this stuff. And the reason why, and I always say the same thing, you know, it's using that language that a stupid geologist like me understands. And it's not that 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 level 60 ninja math stuff that you know it, it's it's that just go it's 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 written in words that geologists get and i think that's an immense service to the industry and uh, yeah really popular books in our com uh, company i just pulled these off of one of my geologists desk is li they literally have them sitting on the desk next to their computer as they work um, and, uh, you know, the courses that I run, I take a few with me uh, and, and plenty of people uh, have an interest in them. What's been that journey for you, putting those books out? Because you probably had all of this sitting in your head. You've been watching this happening. You've seen the feedback. And you say, I need to get this out on paper, right? Yeah. So <laughs> I think um, I reflect back. So I'm a statistician by training. That's statistics. And... Hmm. One of the key lessons from Professor G.P.Y. Clark, who was, who was the, um, at Peter Maritzburg University, he was a um, was very dry head of school and very dry, dark, black humor. We never knew whether he was joking or not. Um, but, but Prof. Clark, it was all about context. Mm -hmm. Statistics is all about context. Numbers mean nothing if you don't have the context. And I think that's the key difference. If you're a mathematician, it's all about the numbers and the interrelationship between the numbers. Whereas if you're a statistician, it's about what do the numbers mean to the context. 
So, you know, number 30, does it mean anything? Is it a count of number of things or is it a measure? Is it centimeters? Is it meters? Is it kilos? So the units matter and the context matters. Mm. And for me, that's what, what I hope I've brought to, to, to the community is mm. when we're measuring things, what are we measuring? What are we trying to do? What is our objective? Um, and, and, and it comes back to context. So for me, geology, the key thing that geology brings to resource estimation is the context. It gives the samples meaning. It gives the dimension between the samples meaning. Yeah. So that's all I tried to convey was, you know, it's, it's, it's about, don't worry about the maths. The maths have patterns that look after themselves. Mm-hmm. If you don't look after the context, you don't know if you're dealing with 30 kilos or 30 meters. Yeah. They mean different things. Well, you do that very well in the book, as I said, because, you know, I've got the other books on the shelf, as many others do, and uh, you want a Krieger block, right? Let's go Krieger block, okay? And you, and you look at the, you know, at, at Isaac's books, and you can work through it, but I, I have to stare for a long time at that page, right? And, uh, but in your book, you step through it in such a simple way with language that I go, oh, is that all it is, right? And, and it's that I, I it's, it sounds so simple, but it's such a rare skill for people because usually the smartest people struggle the most to explain stuff, right? And usually the professors that you'd mentioned, yeah. I had the professors and they were all, you know, on living on a different planet and so smart and they would throw stuff on a whiteboard and everybody would like, eh, what, what is he talking about? And, um, uh, but, you know, it's, it's laid out very, uh, very clear. So thanks for that, for that for, on, on, I'm sure on behalf of a lot of geologists out there who now get it. And for those listening, if you want to know how to create a block, this is the, this is the book where it's made easy. Uh, obviously, plus more because the follow-up book of uh, I'd Like to Be Okay with M-I-K-U-C, I love the title, um, tongue in cheek, um, you know, takes that extra step and even dives into that sort of non-linear space, which is where, where things get tricky for people quite quickly. So, um, yeah, so again, thanks for that. And yeah, I hope that was a good experience, you know, that you got out of that what you were hoping to get out of it as well. Because, I mean, you don't write a book, you know, just to make money, I guess, right? You do it to no, share knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't yeah, make money writing a book. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right. It's, uh, I'm no, sure but it's, I think it just helped. And I th- again, it's about coming back to the first question you asked around, uh, around you know, how do you get to a place? It's, it's testing the edge of what you know. Mm. So how can you communicate something in a way that other people understand it? Yeah. It, it, it's test of, you know, how do I get to that point personally where you can communicate something that other people can understand? It's, that's, that's where it comes from. It's challenging putting challenges in your way constantly yeah see if you so can you, climb over them do you, see, do you, uh, you don't see <laughs> yeah exactly and uh, but and and it's probably you're probably still um every now and then want to go back to the to the teaching run a quick course somewhere with with the hours oh, that you have I left miss, in a week I yes. miss, i'm sure you miss it yeah i miss you know flying to site and yeah. being with people and Watching, watching, the, the most exciting thing is when you explain something and then the, it shows in the eyes, people understand it. And you go, on. wow, yeah. I made a difference here. Yeah. And the reward of that, 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 wow, no, I miss that. And I miss the people and I keep watching where everyone's going and I can remember where people were sitting when they learned things. Um, yeah. yeah. Jeez, I miss it. Yeah, of well, course. Uh, yeah, and I, look, the same for me. I mean, I, I'm, I'm no one to, I just teach other people's work rather than, um, <laughs> you know, make it up myself. So that's, uh, uh, it's been been helpful for the, um, for the courses that I try to put out there or the connections that I have with some mind sites and uh, with the training materials. But one of the things that, that I do find interesting in the, in the, well, you know, first it's a self-learning exercise as well. And then, okay, now I understand that I can, um, I can go and talk to others about it. But one of the things, particularly in this industry, um, and I wasn't actually planning to go here, but the thought just popped up, so I'll put it out there. You know, I always thought coming in this industry, and this, this might be interesting for, for younger people watching, I always thought that my boss would know the answer to this question <laughs> because you're in the industry 
and like a doctor treating a patient for something, you know, they know about how to fix that thing. You ask them, they know. But there is so much in in every direction you go to where people are still fighting, even in the resource space, right? What you you can you have people on one side of the world they really like small blocks, and on the other side of the world they like to minimize the Cretan bias, right? I mean, they're the conditional bias. It is, and there is still this eternal debate going on in the sampling industry as well. People still can't really um, find the perfect answers to all these questions and there are none, right? We're still all still exploring in so many ways. Um, and I think that's made it hard for me. So I, I'm trying to turn it into a question, but you know, maybe as an experience, I, the journey that I've gone through, uh, it's never ending, right? I mean, it's not like, oh, now I get that. Yeah, you get a small part of it, but there's actually more questions than answers at every single point where you think, oh, now I know this, but now there's all these other questions. So I don't know what your experience has been or whether, you know, that uh, with either whether it's resource geology or something else, whether the journey is slowing down or whether there's still all that much to know. But that might be a comforting place to, to leave it for some, uh, some people watching. What do you think? So I think the, the, there's always that curiosity. And, and, whether, whether, um, and I think what's interesting about resource estimation in particular mm. is that the theory emerged from practice which is so different to science. Yeah, yeah. Normally there's a hypothesis and you go out and test it. Whereas in, in resource estimation, it, you know, Danny Cricket took the data to Matheron and they, they forced a equation onto that particular data. To now, what happens if he took data from somewhere else? Would he have got the same equations? Mm -hmm. that, that's what inspires me is to say, well, your starting point was a data set. Mm. If you started with <clears throat> a different data set, mm. you might end up somewhere else. Yeah. And I'm finding it intriguing that, you know, there's this, this nirvana that, you know, machine learning is going to solve it all. And you go, everything. come on, guys, course, machine learning is regression. Yeah. It's just regression on steroids. Yeah, Krigging right. is regression. So, yes, I see some similarities. The key difference is... What Matheron brought to us and what Dani Kricher brought to us was that concept that samples are related to each other. And the closer they are, the more related they are, further away, the less related. Now, machine learning doesn't take that into account. So there's still a whole bunch of analysis that has to be done that I've only seen one person try um, and, and I forget his name right now, where they're starting to say, well, machine learning assumes every point is independent of every other point, which is your classic statistics. Right. Your statistics says yeah. samples are related to each other by distance. Yeah. yeah. That hasn't been translated into machine learning yet. So don't be fooled by, you know, machine learning is going to tell us where the all body is. And even if you can, we yeah. know that the sample separation is such that the volume variance effect changes the model depending on the scale, small blocks, big blocks. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of learning the industry still got to do that innovation space is not taking account of. It's well, fascinating. That, that full circle, right? Because, I mean, going back to research and development and innovation, I had a couple of other discussions on this subject and in, machine learning isn't going to save, uh, save the world, but there are software companies working in the space, obviously actively mm -hmm. trying to weave in machine learning, probably has a more of a marketing component mm -hmm. than actual fundamental science component, but at least there is a movement in that space of people trying to find answers here. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting for them to be found so I can talk to people about it. But uh, yeah, you're quite right. It's uh, that, that's that's a great simplistic way to look at that problem. And um, yeah, it's interesting that 60 years later, that's still how we estimate our our resources, right? So are we, you know, inverse distance and, and ordinary Kriging, um, 60 and 70 years old? It's fascinating. So. Um, and look, and your, your connection with the statistics, again, I'm a geologist and geologists are generally speaking, I shouldn't insult anybody, terrible at, at statistics. But at home I've adopted um, the, 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 I have a histogram argument for anything, whether it's the plumber not doing their job or my kids not cleaning up the Lego, there is a histogram to be pulled out and to be brought into the equation to answer, well, you know, <laughs> overlap of histogram. And, 
and to the mm. point where I'm uh, persona non grata in, in, in some some places. Um, the statistics. Uh, You're just on the tail. <laughs> yeah, 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 probably. But that's uh, well. Look, uh, I'm happy to be on the tail and to stay on the tail or be the tail, whatever, Jackie. But uh, lovely to speak with you. Um, yeah, really enjoyable. Um, yeah, and uh, maybe we'll catch up soon in person. I don't know where it would be, but oh, we were going to catch up in Perth at some point, but life got in the way. But next yeah. time there's always maybe next. it'll be at an airport with an, you know, a conference. Yeah, key learnings there: travel very light, be patient. I enjoy saw your ride. I saw your post the other day, and I haven't travelled with a bag for at least five years, and I smiled straight yeah. away because there is never a lost bag. I, I am yeah. from the from the airport from the plane seat to the taxi in three minutes, and uh, yeah, that's yeah. good good Likewise. advice. If it's not technical yeah. advice, then people can get travel advice. I like it. <laughs> if you've got to, if you've got to. You've got to be able to get through a turnstile in in Europe. Yeah, that's, that's benchmark. That's, that's the way. <laughs> Good. Hey, great to see you, Jackie. And yeah, look Thank forward to see you again. Thank you so much, Renee. Cheers. Lovely to see you.